My name is Peter McCown. I'm a professor of computer science here at Queen Mary. Uh, I've just uh, recently been the coordinator of a project called Lyric, which is one of the largest EU robotics projects uh, that has been funded to date. Uh, this particular project is uh, about research into creating companion robots, robots that are, are socially aware uh, and are able to interact with us in, in a way that, uh, that makes sense to us socially. We were using them in a whole range of different situations. Uh, where they're going to be able to recognise the expressions on people's faces and react to those, uh, to understand something about how close to, to human beings it's acceptable for, for those robots to move, and to actually perform real tasks to support people in their day-to-day -day lives. We've got uh, three different scenarios that we're looking at. One of them is uh, the robot house scenario, where we have uh, robots actually working in a real house at uh, the University of Hatfield to uh, help support uh, those perhaps uh, more elderly people in uh, being able to continue to live at home. Um, another one is at uh, Harriet Watt University up in Edinburgh in Scotland, where we're building a robot which would be a team buddy to help around in the office. Uh, the interesting little twist on that is that uh, the intelligence, the, the, the kind of uh, entity, the artificial intelligence, if you like, in there, can exist both in a physical robot body but it can also move into a handheld device. So what can happen is that uh, you can take your, your companion, your friend, uh, from their robot body, you can walk with them around the building, they can give you directions, continue to learn uh, about you and the sorts of things you like to do. And then when you return close enough to the body, uh, the intelligence moves back into the, uh, the robot body, thus allowing you to continue the interaction with them. It's called migration. Uh, nobody's ever really looked at this in detail before, but that's something that we're interested in looking at in the project. The, the final showcase is looking at it in uh, the area of uh, entertainment and education. So in Lisbon, at the moment, in a chess club for uh, local school kids, we have a, a cat robot. Um, this particular cat robot recognises the expression in your face, knows how the game's going, knows about the games that you've played previously, and can support you in learning how to play a better game of chess uh, through giving socially relevant cues like saying well done when you play a good move or that wasn't so good maybe you want to try it again. It becomes sympathetic, uh, it understands something about the way that you're feeling uh, and it's able to reflect that back by uh, a face uh, and an understanding of the way to configure that face whether it's smiling or looking sad because you made a mistake. Throughout the Lyric project which has obviously excited a lot of interest both scientifically but also in the media one of the questions I'm always asked is, will robots take over the world? This is a classic question that I think everybody who's done any type of robotics research has had to deal with. And so my challenge to you is to actually understand some of the issues around that and answer that question yourself. Like any piece of research work, what you need to do is you need to understand what the evidence are, what the, the various uh, different uh, elements are that are coming together to, first of all, make people wonder about that particular question, but also to give what you believe is your answer to that question. And in these cases, very often, there's no right or wrong answer. It's merely a question of there being a better answer. You've got evidence to be able to support your particular point of view. Just as important as developing the new technologies and those new robots for the Lurk project was the consideration, as it is for, for many scientists throughout the world, of the ethical implications of what we're doing. So, Ethics is basically that field of, of study that looks at whether or not a particular act, a particular behaviour is intrinsically right or wrong. And there are various different ways that one can think about this. Uh, there are two kind of main philosophical fields in, in, in ethics. One of them can be called uh, the, the duty theorists and they're based around the ideas of philosopher Immanuel Kant. Uh, Immanuel Kant's uh, ideas are around the fact that there are kind of universal laws uh, that, that can never be broken, whatever the circumstances. Um, whereas later on, uh, people like Stuart Mills and uh, other philosophers like Jeremy Bentham uh, came up with a slightly different view on that, and they uh, produced something called consequentialist theories, uh, or, uh, or duty theories and, uh, within ethics. And specifically there, what you're looking at is, what will the impact be of a particular action on the largest number of people and the idea is to do something that will make the largest number of people happiest. So it basically is to do the consequences of what you're doing rather than a universal rule, 
you have to decide how that's going to change the quality of, of people's lives, how it's going to increase their utility. Utility is a, a technical term for their happiness. So trying to increase that uh, maximally is, is one of the, the, the views of why an act is good, because it makes most people happy. In fact, in Lyric, we had uh, a special uh, stream within the project with some people looking at the, the ethics of the robots that we were building, uh, in particular because those robots are going to be uh, impacting on, on people's day-to-day -day lives and we're deliberately setting out to produce robots that are going to be socially interactive, that are actually going to try to trigger some kind of emotional response in you that you're wanting to continue to interact with them rather than just leave them after 15 minutes when you get bored with it. So there are clearly ethical issues involved in there. Uh, one of the ones that came up very early in the project was the fact that a, a robot, unlike a human being, could remember absolutely everything that happened in its interactions with you. Uh, a little bit like a, a search engine, it could recall absolutely everything. In fact, what we did was we, we started to, to speak to, to, to people about this, including uh, actually uh, a couple of years back, uh, the Computers and Society course, as it was then, students at Queen Mary, about what they wanted in a companion in the way of, of, of the memories and the way that that would be recalled. And it became very clear that one of the things about being a good friend is that good friends forget the right sorts of things. Um, and also good friends don't necessarily tell the same thing to, to, to different people. So the sorts of information that you would give your parents is possibly different from the information that you would give your, your kind of close friends in a university. So actually understanding what the requirements are for a companion for a, a, a robot's memory to actually act in a way that makes it a lot more human, a lot more likeable, for want of a better word, was actually an important part of this. And in fact, the work that uh, the Queen Mary students did actually fed in specifically to the specification of the cognitive architecture, which was the big kind of software system that we built for that, that was used in all the robots later on. So. Uh, Scientists should always be dialoguing, they should always be speaking to people about this to make sure that we produce things that aren't going to cause uh, a great deal of harm and that are going to actually be, be suitable for the purpose that they're de developed for. In this case, uh, a companion who has a, a memory and an understanding of how to use that memory in a way that makes you feel trusting and, and supporting of it. The issues around whether or not robots will rule the world have a number of, of cultural elements to them as well. If you look at the, um, the, the Western civilizations, they tend to have a very negative view of robots. Uh, most uh, TV books and, and, and movies portray robots as being uh, the villains of the piece. And in part that's because the uh, predominant Judeo-Christian uh, religion of, of those areas says that the only thing that can have a soul is, is a human being, and therefore there's something uh, strange and, 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 and inappropriate about a physical, uh, technical object mimicking the fact that it has, has, a, has a soul involved in it. However, if you look in, uh, at the Far East, particularly in Japan, they've really taken to robots in a, in a big way, and in part that's because the religion that's predominant there, which is, is Shintoism, believes that our soul can be in, in inanimate objects as well as human beings, that the soul can be anywhere. And if you look at Japanese culture, for example, manga and so on, uh, you'll see that robots are actually portrayed as positive, as the heroes very often in the stories. And I remember when I was a, when I was a child, uh, really enjoying watching a, a, a movie a cartoon series called Gigantor the Space Age Robot. And Gigantor, the, the robot in there, was actually the friend and the hero of the, of the young boy uh, in the series. And that was a very different view of the, the kinds of robots that you tended to see uh, in other things like Doctor Who, for example. So part of what triggers this will robots take over the world, there's this cultural element to it, and it's worth trying to explore a little bit more about that to, to see uh, how that actually frames the questions that people are using. But there are other broader issues that we need to consider, for example, uh, it's been argued that, uh, that robots uh, being used, for example, in, in, uh, in war are a bad thing. And, and yet there are others who argue that robots being used in war is actually a good thing, because human beings commit atrocities. 
human beings as soldiers can break things like the Geneva Convention and can, can produce really horrific acts of human-on-human of -human hatred. And yet robots could be programmed so that they didn't do that, that they had an ethical code to them that wouldn't be broken. Would that make them a better, better soldier? Again, these are questions that are open for discussion. I think one of the other issues are, is whether or not robots are going to be in situations where we would, we would consider that they weren't robots on the battlefield, maybe one of them. There's a, a large development going on in, the, uh, in Japan, for example, of robots being used as babysitters. So uh, busy parents can't always be there with their children, so they tell us. Uh, you build a robot, that robot is monitoring the child and, um, and you're able to hug it and uh, the, the hug can be passed back. What you're possibly doing there, some have argued, is that you're taking the, the human qualities out of actually what is a key part of the development of a young child, i.e. the bonding with the parents, and replacing that with bonding with the machine. And is that something that's a good or a bad uh, indication of the way we want to go as a society? Uh, all technologies are, are, are morally neutral. It's what we do with them that actually is important. And the fact that robots have these wonderful abilities let us build cars more cheaply, they do repetitive, dangerous jobs that human beings wouldn't want to do. Uh, but are they going to take over the world? I think that's a, that's a question that you have hopefully will start to form some answers on when you've, when you've looked through this. There are issues around robot safety, clearly, because they're large mechanical devices on the whole, and if you get hit by one of those, it will cause you very severe damage. Uh, therefore, consideration of, of things like safety in proximity, particularly with, with other human beings, was something we had to take very seriously within the Lyric project using robots in, in an actual home. So there are a whole range of, of, of kinds of issues that you might want to be thinking about in this project. Uh, I've given you a, a sheet that uh, gives you some uh, places that you can go and read and find out a little bit more about this. Uh, and hopefully at the end of it you'll be able to formulate your own ideas about whether or not robots will take over the world. As I said, there's no correct or wrong answer to this, but it's an answer that you should get to by researching and uh, finding out what the, what the reality of the situation is, rather than going on what you've seen in the movies or on the TVs, because as we've seen, that can very often depend on which country you happen to be in. So I hope you enjoy uh, doing this project, and uh, you can get in touch with me to ask for more information if you want. I've also put a link to the, uh, the Lyric website where you can see lots of videos of the robots we developed, uh, interviews with various members of the team talking about the, the different parts of the project. And in fact, Ruth Ailett, one of the researchers up in uh, Harriet Watt, also was a video in there discussing exactly this topic, will robots rule the world? So that's maybe a good place to start. You don't need to agree with her, but uh, let's see. Enjoy. Thank you very much. One of the uh, unique points about uh, electronic engineering and computer science here at Queen Mary is the fact that we are the creators of the Computer Science for Fun initiative. This magazine that we produce, uh, sponsored by companies like Google and Microsoft, uh, is used in schools up and down the, the UK, possibly you've seen some in the schools uh, where, where you attended, but it's also used internationally uh, in a whole range of different countries. The opportunity uh, that we're going to offer you uh, is that if you do a particularly good piece of work, we're going to be able to include that either on the Computer Science for Fun website, which gets millions of visitors every week, or alternatively, if it's really good, we'll put it into the magazine. So an opportunity for the work that you're doing here as part of this module to become known worldwide, and that really helps your uh, CV, gives you those extra points that will make you far more employable at the end. So uh, it's well worth working hard on, on putting this project together, because it gives you a chance to go for a bit of fame.